go now here. I'm Judy Johnson with the Minnesota Private College Council. I wanna welcome everyone um, to this opportunity to reconnect with our transfer counselors here at the Minnesota Private Colleges. I'm so glad you could take some time to learn about what's new, what's interesting, what's helpful to your students um, that are interested in transferring and having other options and to look at the best fit for them as they are moving on from their community college experience. Um, I do wanna mention that this is being recorded and we will have this available on our website at a later date. Um, but we do want to um, encourage you um, to listen to what our counselors have to say. Each one will share for about five minutes about their school. If you have questions, you can answer those in the Q&A and then we will um, answer those um, later on in our session today. Um, so glad you could join us. And um, we're going to go ahead and get started with our first college, and that's going to be Bethany Lutheran. And Reese, I'm gonna hand it to you. Awesome, thank you very much, Judy. Um, yes, so my name is Reese Boucher. I'm an uh, admissions counselor and transfer specialist here at Bethany Lutheran College. Uh, we're in Mankato, Minnesota. Um, I've been working with students uh, for a couple of years here and helping them through the transfer process, which uh, it, it can be tricky, but that's what I'm here for, to try to help with that. Um, so uh, I figure uh, a good way to kind of share uh, some of this info it might be a, a guided tour through uh, our website where students might find uh, some of this information, students or counselors. Um, so I think I'll go ahead and share my screen here. Um, there we go. I believe that should be sharing. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is our main website. Um, so when students come to BLC, Bethany Lutheran College edu, the first place they'll want to go is gonna be our transfer page. Uh, so the transfer page uh, is gonna have lots of information specifically for those transfer students. Um, it's got my contact information here as the main counselor who would be working with them. Um, a, a link here where they can set up a personal campus visit, which we always recommend and would love students to come. Um, applying to Bethany is free, so it's, I always recommend that students do that sooner rather than later. Um, it helps me um, help them through the process, so they can do that right here. We also use the transfer evaluation system um, as a growing database of credits that have been transferred in from other schools. Uh, so here is where students can access that. They can look up their school and see how credits might have come in. Um, we've got links to um, all kinds of other great places on our website, um, some programs, I'll, I'll get to those in just a minute here. Um, but the, as far as the admissions process goes, there, there is a lot to, uh, to go into it. We've got lots of information here where um, students can find how their credits might come in, um, scholarships that are available, um, next steps in the process. Um, we do have uh, some great uh, transfer policies. So we do have an AA transfer policy. If a student is transferring in with an Associate of Arts degree, all their general education requirements are considered complete uh, with the exception of a few religion courses. Um, for students that are coming in, those uh, requirements are actually cut in half for the religion requirements. Um, so it keeps them right on track towards graduation in a, in a timely manner there. Um, we do have some information here on how the Minnesota transfer curriculum relates to our general education credits. Typically, students coming in with an AA have completed the majority of the MNTC, um, but for those that haven't, if they go through the full MNTC, that covers the vast majority of their uh, gen eds for Bethany. So um, there's some documents and links here that kind of help with that. Um, so I always recommend students take a look at that. Um, when it comes to admission, we do have rolling admission uh, starting after September of the fall. Um, students, as soon as they get all the pieces in, can find out right away um, uh, if they're accepted or what the decision is and kind of move forward there. Um, when it does come to those scholarships, um, we do have uh, some pretty great automatic scholarships based on their kind of uh, benchmarks throughout their college uh, experience. They're based primarily on uh, college GPA and the number of credits earned. 
um, our financial aid is, is very flexible with students and, and always helps them to get the best uh, financial aid that they possibly can. In addition to that, we do have a variety of uh, activity scholarships for students hoping to get involved with various activities on campus. Um, these include uh, scholarships for a wide kind of variety of areas, uh, including uh, journalism, music, speech, theater, visual art, um, leadership, music lessons, uh, mock trial, and uh, clay target and esports. Um, those are some of our new ones. So those are uh, clay target and esports are two of our newer extracurricular opportunities. Um, we're really excited about them. We've seen some awesome success in those areas, and it's a great way for students to get involved on campus. Um, so those, those combined with the transfer scholarships are sort of the biggest chunk of financial aid that's available for um, students. When it comes to programs, uh, we do have a, a wide variety of programs. We're adding new ones all the time. I saw a few new ones listed on the transfer guide that we have. Um, even since then, there have been some new ones that have just been announced. We're pretty excited about um, criminal justice is our, our newest major. It, it literally just got approved uh, and we're excited to do that. So a few other programs that are pretty uh, common and uh, lots of ways for students to kind of continue on and, and go through their, their four-year degree. Great. Thank you so much, Reese. Appreciate Absolutely. it. All right, so our next school is going to be Bethel University and Grace, we're gonna hand it off to you. Hi, my name is Grace Kane. I've been in this position of transfer admissions counselor for about four months now. So I'm starting to get to know felt relationship with community colleges. If your information that does not say my name on it, that means it's probably outdated. So I'll have it up on a slide to show you the updated information that we have. So for transferring to Bethel, Bethel currently has 96 bachelor degree options in the CAPS program and nine bachelor degree options in the CAPS program. A couple of things about the difference. CAS stands for College of Arts and Sciences. This is a traditional undergrad experience. These are students who usually are ranging from 18 to 25. A lot of them live on campus. These are in-person classes. So kind of like the traditional four-year experience that a lot of people think. And then CAP stands for College of Adult and Professional Studies. This is geared towards um, the people who either want to complete their degree or get a degree, but they're working full time. So this provides flexibility with online options like a pay by credit, and it allows people to take classes part time while still working full time because a lot of people still have jobs or like families or other responsibilities. So Bethel has rolling admissions. Um, and our main scholarship is the Royal Merit Scholarship which is based solely on GPA at the time of admission. So we accept Associates of Arts degrees, like many other colleges, that gets you out of almost all, but I believe five of the general ed requirements. And a lot of Associates of Arts, if you transfer in with degree specific credits, we'll count those as well. Also accept Associates of Science degrees and Minnesota Transfer Curriculum. Bethel is a part of the initiative to develop transfer pathways for private colleges, similar to what they have for Minnesota State Colleges. So we're working on expanding those as well as they get reviewed. So the ones we're focusing on right now, psychology, business, and biology will be next. And then as they're updated over time, Bethel will be expanding those as well. So we have a lot of information on our website. We also have, we use T's. So for students who wanna see how their credits transfer, they can either use T's on our website or they can send it to me and we can get a uh, transcript evaluation to see how it will um, go through. And if it's not in our T system, sometimes students get confused. That just means we'll need the syllabus to go over it. We will evaluate it. Doesn't necessarily mean we won't take it. Bethel takes almost all credits. The only ones like sometimes university like specific like intro courses we won't take, but as long as students have C or higher, either they'll transfer in as a specific class or as an elective. An event we have coming up is a transfer visit day on Friday, May 13th. So what this is, it's an opportunity to get students to get to know campus, 
take some tours, experience like what life would be like. They'll also have opportunities to meet with like transfer specialists, see how their credits will come in, get to know some professors, see financial aid. So I think I've sent out information to a lot of colleges about this. If you have more questions, again, my contact information is right there. You can contact me at any time. So if you have students with questions about how their how their time at Bethel would look, have them send their transcripts to me and I can evaluate it and see how long their time would come in in a form of like an academic plan. And so the main steps, a lot of students ask, you know, how do we get started? The main two things are uh, start an application online. It is free. It will say a transfer application. They are slightly different than like a new or un, like new student application. So have that and then have their transcript sent in. And once that is, um, admissions decisions are usually made pretty quickly. So those are the first two steps. And then I'll put them on the radar and I can help them walk through the rest of the process. So if you have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, that's my email right there and my phone number. Uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much, Grace. Appreciate it. Um, also then the next person we have is Terry uh, with College of St. John's and St. Ben's. Thanks, Judy. Good morning, everyone. I wish I could see all your faces. It feels like it has been forever since we have been on your campuses. I'm excited for some in-person opportunities, hopefully over the course of the next year. As Judy said, I'm with St. Ben's and St. John's. Um, and I was trying to think of what was new since the last time we all met because it feels like forever. I will, uh, a couple of things that I just want to highlight. Um, we have, we are also part of the NPC project, uh, working through some pathway um, programs. And that actually uh, is probably the most exciting thing for me. We have been approved to begin looking at block transfer for students with their Minnesota transfer curriculum or their AA degree. Um, and I cannot be more excited about that. I think it creates great opportunity for transfer students. Um, as long as they have met their Minnesota transfer curriculum requirements, that will come in, um, in, in completing several of our foundational courses in the integrations curriculum. There are still going to be several courses they need to complete here, but many are attached to their major courses, so they're not standalone. Um, it will allow them to pretty seamlessly transfer in um, make sure that we're identifying major courses that, that uh, take care of those um, thematic courses they may not have completed yet, and hopefully get them done in just two more years here. Um, with the Pathway Project with the Private College Council, we also have our own TIGO grant and have been working on pathways, um, starting with some local community colleges for us, so the St. Cloud Community and Technical College, and then Ridgewater in Wilmer and Hutch, but I will be expanding those as they are developed. Um, so stay tuned, there will be more information about that. Um, a couple of new programs, we did do a study, um, sort of a temporary uh, grant funded minor in global health and that has been approved to full minor status. So it is a um, interdisciplinary program that allows students that chance to really think critically about global health, what that might look like from a physician's perspective an administrative perspective, the, the social work sociology side of it. Um, and in a, um, a public policy perspective. So actually a great program. It does couple nicely with the fact that we've recently added graduate and doctoral nursing programs as well. So we do have a doctor of nursing practice in leadership, uh, post bachelor's, post master's, and a doctor of nursing practice in fam as a family nurse practitioner. And that is a um, lifespan. So it's not focused on early childhood or adult, it's a lifespan um, program and a Master of Science in Nursing um, for Education and Leadership. That Master of Science, um, just in uh, February, at, we announced that we would also do a four plus one for our undergraduate students. So a student in our undergrad program as a junior can apply to the master's program, do paired courses in their senior year, and then just one additional year complete their Master of Science. Um, so those are probably the newest things for us. There's some building on campus. There's always work being done, it seems. Um, we, if, for those of you that are familiar with the campus, the beautiful earth homes, not so much got torn down uh, and new apartment buildings are being built. So uh, can't wait to see that uh, and when that is all completed. Um, and I think 
unless unless there's things I really missed or more new things since I last saw you. That's those are sort of the highlights of what I have. We do have scholarships uh, available for transfer students. The um, admission process is fairly simple. We will still maintain our transfer guides that will identify courses for a course by course evaluation. Unfortunately, they're a little buried on our website. So if you can't find them, let me know. I will point you in that direction. Um, hopefully within the next month to six weeks, our marketing team will be turning their focus to what our transfer sections look like on the website and they will become much more front and center. So I think that's all I have. Thank you so much for being here and joining us. Thank you, Terry. Um, and next we have Brenda with the College of St. Scholastica. Hi, I'm Brenda Panger, Associate Director of Transfer Admissions at the College of St. Scholastica in Duluth, Minnesota. Um, I'm coming to you live from Lake Superior College because I'm on the Lake Superior College campus every Tuesday. So um, I thought, wow, I'm going to multitask here and, and visit with other community colleges as well as being here for students. I think the most exciting thing for us right now is our transfer benedictine scholarships range from 21,000 to 28,000. So we are matching our freshman scholarship levels. Um, it's very exciting for me because I've been really uh, a passionate proponent of transfer students and transfer scholarships in the whole 25 years I've been doing this. And we finally, finally are matching those freshman scholarships. Also, we have a brand new program called Saints Match. So that's matching our, our kind of our marketing pieces, public school price, private school perks. So our the price match scholarship will match the University of Minnesota system. I think it is about a $27,000 scholarship is what we figured it out. If students can show us that they've applied to a University of Minnesota school, and show us their acceptance letter, we will exchange the transfer Benedictine scholarship if it's lower for that $27,000 Saints match. So that has been something we have been working on for quite a few years as well. Um, we also have other scholarships you can apply for. The transfer Benny is automatic. The Saints match you need to talk to me about and get that application or acceptance letter to me and then I can change that. So financially, we're really trying to be accessible to all students. Um, and that's, that's kind of what the driving force behind this has been, especially through COVID. We've, I've gotten the upper level leadership to really, really embrace transfer students. And our new president is amazing, Dr. Barbara McDonald, in her beliefs in transfer, in the transfer student as well. We also accept the AA or Minnesota transfer curriculum as meeting our lower division gen eds, except for religious studies and an upper division writing elective. So we're very, very generous in what we accept for transfer credit. And I've been told that by many students applying at, at the other state schools that they've been so surprised that we are so generous in accepting credit compared to the state schools that is part of their community college system. Um, we're part of Transferology, so you can look up your credit transfer on Transferology, but I can also complete an unofficial transcript evaluation for you and help you figure out where your cred credits transfer and approximately how long it would take to finish your degree, the student's degree. We're very strong in the health sciences. We're known for our nursing, social work. We have the typical Bachelor of Science in nursing. We have the post-bac nursing, those who have a degree in another field and wanna come back for their nursing degree. We have the RN to BS as well. And then that moves nicely to the um, doctor of nurse practitioner. We have our exercise physiology program is very strong, leading to the physical therapy and occupational therapy and even our PA program. So it's, we're very flexible. We have that DNP, so the doctor of nurse practitioner. We also have the physician's assistant. So students can, they have a nursing degree, they can go on. If they don't have a nursing degree, they can go on to the physician's assistant program. Our education program is very strong. 
I think the main piece about the privates is the attention that students can get from the faculty and staff that, you know, it really is an individualized program for each student and the faculty and staff are, are very open to working with students on their individual basis. We have a free application with rolling admissions, basically apply, send your transcripts, I always like to remind students to fill out their FAFSA to make sure they can get as, as much financial assistance as possible. And it's surprising how much financial assistance students can get even compared to going to the community college and state schools. So definitely worth your time to fill out the, worth students time to fill out the FAFSA. And happy to answer any questions that students have. We're always open and just super excited to get back into the community colleges down in the cities this next um, next year. I've been able to do to visit the community colleges up on the the range here and in my area, and it's it's been nice. It's been a little slow because there's not as many students on campus, but it sure is nice to meet with them in person and talk about all the opportunities and resources we have for them. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me, bpanger at css.edu or um, give me a call if you have questions, 218-723-6067. Thanks, thanks for having us. Thanks, Brenda. And next we have Ben with Concordia St. Paul. Awesome, thank you, Judy. Uh, if you guys forgive me, I kind of broke this up into two uh, and had a list of things that you wanna know about kind of our transfer side and then a little bit from a transfer student's perspective uh, because I was also a transfer student. I went through this process once before and now I get to work with transfers here at CSP. Uh, I should lead off by saying this, uh, on our contact sheet on the uh, transfer pamphlet you got, right now it labels my partner, Jackie. There are three transfer counselors here at Concordia St. Paul. We see a lot of transfers. So you're welcome to contact her or myself at bcipher at csp.edu. But to make it all easy, the number's still the same. So don't worry about that at all. Uh, to jump into this though, I wanted to talk about kind of the key pieces for scholarships for transfers. That's always a huge deal. We do have transfer scholarships, especially for our transfer students. Phi Theta Kappa and Transfer Advantage are the main two. Transfer Advantage means where we, we are working with MNTC. We are working with AAs, ADs. If a student completes a degree at another school and decides to continue to us, we wanna reward that. So we do take a lot of pride in our students that start in one spot and choose to finish with Concordia. With that, we do rolling admission. So another thing that pops up is deadlines. When can I get in? How can I know? Because knowing what you're playing with in terms of credits matters to a lot of transfer students, obviously. So we do rolling admissions. Uh, the quickest I can get a student in is usually three days. Sometimes if everything's together, it's amazing how well we can get somebody into the system and just get them started on more of the dread, I like to call it, um, where my credits are. How long do I have to finish? Um, if I didn't say before, we do work with MNTC. That is something we see all the time. So students often worry because they're on a different program than the degree of uh, the AA. Do you work with this? Do you not? Absolutely, we do. And we see it all of the time. Um, our transfer pathway in itself is pretty wide open. We are a very transfer friendly school. We have been for many years. We accept up to 90 credits. And we do that on a regular. I actually have five students currently enrolled that are at the exact 90 point. And that means students can come in halfway through a major if they want to. Now, again, I see it all the time, but it doesn't mean all of our transfer students have this. It's just nice to give students flexibility to bring in as much as they want or as little as they want, but we all know they wanna bring as much in as they can to get towards that graduation date. Um, with that, we work with tests and transferology, but I always recommend students fill out an application. It's free, the whole process is free and get that credit evaluation so you know where you sit. Um, some of our new majors and programs, actually I'm gonna relate this to a building. Uh, we just bought out a nine floor uh, building dedicated completely to our nursing program and all of our pre's, pre-veterinarian science, pre-law, pre-doctoral, pre-dental, you name it, we probably have some sort of pre there. So it's been really exciting to see that grow and our nursing program has been growing year by year. Uh, unfortunately with COVID, uh, it's been at a little bit of a standstill, but we're seeing those numbers jump up again as 25 to 35% of my students that transfer are nursing majors. So that's been a really attractive thing for a lot of our students. And now, like I said, I was a transfer student. So now being on the other side of the table has been a lot of fun for me. And I wanted to give you a couple of things that I wish I had that Concordia offers our transfer students, uh, starting with 
just after they get their credit evaluation, they get to meet with our specialized advisors. So we have these things called specialized advisors. We only have six academic advisors on campus. And rather than have them cover a full spread of over 60 of our majors, they specialize in 10. So to steal the state farm saying they know a thing or two because they see a thing or two, well, they do that with our transfer students. So if we have a nursing major that comes in, that can be tougher to translate into a new school with. Well, Rochelle knows exactly what to do because she's only seen those kind of cases for the past 10 years she's been here. So it gives our students a lot of comfort. Uh, on top of that, we have faculty advisors that work as kind of a professional development aid because it's a big deal when you transfer from one school to another, but an even bigger deal when you're about to transfer from school to life and actually go out to the professional world. So having a teacher there and having a 17 to one faculty to student ratio, uh, we're able to really have those close knit community bonds with our transfer students and bring them into our community quickly. Uh, on top of that, our professional development office is open to them all year round. So they are welcome to stop by at any point. Our alumni network is open to them uh, and they can come back to this for the rest of their life. So after they graduate, they can stop in and use that. I use it with my previous school all the time. I'm really glad that it's there. But other than that, I wanted to say thank you for letting me join today and thank you guys for listening. Thanks so much, Ben. Uh, next we have uh, Chase with McAllister College. Hi everybody, excited to be here. Um, I'll be sharing some themes that I've, I've heard from other colleges on the call today. Uh, my name is Jace Riggin. I'm an assistant director of uh, admission here at McAllister College. I'm a Gusty, um, and so I love talking about the MIAC and Minnesota private college opportunities. I always make jokes that I'm like partially employed by McAllister, partially employed by the state of Minnesota when I'm traveling. Um, I double recruit with another colleague named Adam Vandersloos. The current contact on the transfer guide is our associate vice president, Elian Paz. She would love to chat with you all. She's an MCAD grad, um, but it would be Adam or I, and I will plug that contact information in. I'll just give a brief overview about what we are looking for in students at McAllister in alignment with our values and our mission. Um, small undergraduate only 2,200 students, deeply focused on our core values of multiculturalism, international cooperation, as well as service to society. Um, thinking a little bit about our scholarship opportunities, we're going to be unique from the friends on the call and the space that we meet 100% of demonstrated need. And so there is not a set scholarship amount, there is not a set bracket, we meet 100%. Um, and so students will be required to submit a CSS profile, in addition to state and federal tax documents and a FAFSA. This allows us to take into account medical debt, what is still owed on a home, there are pieces that the FAFSA missed that our financial aid office wants to see and able to award full need. The other component is we do have robust merit scholarships available for transfer students. These range from 2000 up to $24,000 per year, often reducing the net price for our students to be below a state school option. Um, thinking about our credit cap, we are less transfer friendly. We are working hard with a new president to change that. Our current president, Dr. Rivera, Brenda, I loved the doctor uh, part with the president, it's super fun. Um, she wants McAllister to be a better partner in terms of the uh, educational access uh, system here in uh, Minnesota. She's talking a lot about making sure that we're part of the ladder of opportunity for Minnesotans um, in ways that we haven't currently been, um, which means exploring being part of the Minnesota transfer curriculum, which we're not currently part of, as well as having more articulated pathways with Minnesota Community College partners. Um, as you probably tell, I'm verbose. I love chatting with people. Um, I, I'm looking to build more relationships and be open about where we are in our transfer process. Uh, two years must be completed at McAllister, and that coincides with a 64 credit cap limit. I, I want to be clear that very few students are, are getting 64 credits to come into McAllister with. Usually I'm seeing a year and a half or a year worth of credit, just to give you a sense of who might be a good fit coming to our institution. Um, the other pieces would be new programs, a brand new data science program that we're really excited about. This really expands opportunities for our students interested in mathematics, computer science, and, and other uh, statistical analysis avenues. Um, two unique pieces I always like to highlight when talking with students is our educational studies is not your typical bachelor of science or bachelor in arts then giving you a teaching certificate and license. We don't do the ninth semester student teaching. We advise very strictly towards a master's in education. 
So that's another component to be thinking about with our program in educational studies at McAllister. Um, last piece um, is really excited to chat with you. If you have any questions, I will again drop uh, Adam and my contact in the, the, the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chase. Appreciate it. Okay, and now we have Jen with St. Kate's. Hi, everybody. Good morning. My name is Jen Searles. I am the Director of Transfer Partnerships and Pathways here at St. Kate's. Um, I am so excited not only to see all of you community college advisors, but all my colleagues too here with the Minnesota Privates. We miss each other. So it's fun that we get to do this with all of you today. I've been at St. Kate's almost 24 years. Um, and my love, of course, is transfers students. And so I'm glad to do this. So I actually have a PowerPoint just because I'm old and I forget things. So um, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, just to give you an idea, this is kind of um, some overview of why St. Kate's. The big thing I just want to make sure that I highlight here is our students. 42% uh, of our students are Pell eligible, 31% of our students are first gen, and 42% of our students are BIPOC students. Um, and that's really important to St. Kate's. Um, we definitely work very hard um, with our students that are coming into us and transferring to St. Kate's. A big thing with us too, uh, we have a large uh, uh, majors here on campus, a, a wide variety. We have 60 plus majors on our campus. Um, we have three different schools. We have our, our College for Women, which is our traditional uh, kind of um, undergraduate school. We have our College for Adults, which houses about 20 plus programs here at St. Kate's and that's open to both men and women and that's non-traditional. And of course we have our gra graduate programs as well. Our top programs, of course, are gonna be our healthcare programs. We're very well known, just like Scholastica, um, but are, we're very well known for our healthcare programs, nursing, public health, um, sonography, radiation therapy, radiography, uh, respiratory care, and all those pre-programs too, pre, um, uh, our doctorate of physical therapy, our, doc, our occupational therapy, master's degrees and um, advanced degrees. And so those are kind of some big ones for us. Some of our unique programs we have at St. Kate's, uh, we have a fashion design and fashion merchandising program, which is extremely popular, healthcare sales. Um, we do have an ASL and interpreting program. Um, uh, we have a lot of dual degree programs, again, that pre-PT, OT um, programs like that, public health. Uh, we are part of the Associated Colleges of the Twin Cities, which I think is a highlight. There's five of us that are all friends, um, and so our, our students can take classes at St. Kate, St. Thomas, Hamlin, McAllister, and Augsburg, um, and I think that's always a highlight, too. Um, talking a little bit about transfer, we also use tests and transferology, so uh, please use those systems. I know your students know how to definitely work with those systems and we're extremely transfer friendly. Something that's new and exciting for us is we've worked really hard on our core or our gen eds, and this is brand new for us starting fall of 2022. So if anybody, uh, any student comes in with an AA or the Minnesota transfer curriculum, that is completely satisfied except one course and that's our global search for justice. That's all they have to take. Um, our residency requirements also have changed. Uh, the students can bring in, in uh, um, bring courses to us and they only have to take 32 credits here at St. Kate's. We have many uh, two plus two pathway programs that are built already. And again, we are also excited about the table grant and the partnership we're doing with MPCC. Um, and so that is continuous. Uh, we're continuously building partnerships and um, pathway programs with all of you. Our uh, strong transfer scholarships is important also to highlight our academic merit scholarships range anywhere from 10 to $26,000. We have a venture scholarship uh, if you live out of state. PTK um, is 2,500 and these scholarships are stackable. The other scholarship I wanna really highlight is our St. Kate's Complete Scholarship. This is something that we have right now built with our uh, seven Metro Twin City schools, but this is going to expand starting this next year. If a student comes in with an MNTC, the AA or actually any AAS, AS, AFA, they get an additional $3,000 on top of those other scholarships. Um, and so this will be really exciting, especially as we build these Teagle partnerships and pathways. 
Um, and I think that's kind of all I want to talk about today. Um, but yeah, we're excited. Well, thank you for having us. Um, kind of fun stuff. Thanks so much, Jen. Appreciate it. All right. And Kyle with St. Thomas. Yes, rounding us out. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Kyle. I'm from the University of St. Thomas. I'm a part of a team of three transfer admissions counselors. Uh, good to be here with all of you. So I'm going to talk about uh, St. Thomas in general and then highlight some new things we've got going on here. So we are Minnesota's largest private college. We're located in St. Paul. Uh, we have over 150 majors and minors. Um, some areas of study include business, engineering, education, health sciences, um, unique programs like digital media arts, lots of pathways and, and choice for students to choose from all in small class sizes here. Um, some new things that we're excited about for our transfer population is that we are now accepting the Minnesota transfer curriculum and the Associate of Arts degree. If students come in having completed those programs, uh, then they will have satisfied almost all of our general education, our core curriculum uh, here at St. Thomas. They have two more classes they'll need to take. So it satisfies a lot of requirements uh, that they have. Uh, we have also increased our transfer scholarship, all admitted transfer students are automatically given a scholarship. It's based on the GPA at the time that they are admitted. Um, if they improve their GPA, let's say they're applying now for, for fall, they get admitted, and then their spring grades come in and they've improved, they can submit some forms to us and we can potentially increase that scholarship. But right now the range is $10,000 to $30,000 annually, and that sticks with them until they graduate from St. Thomas. We also have a, a great uh, scholarship for anyone exploring engineering. We have four engineering degrees as part of a grant from the National Science Foundation. We've got a program called the Apex Engineering Scholarship Program that is up to $10,000 for admitted students. They must have a 3.0 GPA. They must major in one of those engineering fields. They have to have a FAFSA on file. And there's a priority deadline of May 15th. So they should apply to St. Thomas. Um, they should indicate that they're interested in engineering on their application. Um, and then we'll send them uh, information about how to apply for that additional scholarship. Uh, also very new at St. Thomas, we are starting a Bachelor of Science in Nursing program here as part of our Morrison Family College of Health. Uh, the first uh, intended pre-licensed nursing students will be starting at St. Thomas this fall semester. In the spring of 23, they will be applying for the program. We are selecting 50 nursing students. Uh, that will be a combination of students who are already on campus, uh, incoming first year students, uh, and transfer students. So I've gotten a lot of questions about that. It's still very new, so we have to figure <laughs> some things out, but uh, it is a four year program. So anyone interested in nursing uh, at St. Thomas will be here for four years in total, they start this fall semester and then they're admitted to the nursing program. But in this, it's an exciting time. Uh, we are also an NCAA division one uh, sports institution. That's an exciting change. This has been our first year as a D1 institution. Now we're one of two in Minnesota um, and we are playing you know, North Dakota State University and University of Denver and uh, we're in four different sports leagues because that's complicated with hockey and football and everything else, uh, but it's a fun time. So uh, students can come here and, and engage in that D1 big time sports uh, athletics experience. Um, and then we're also uh, groundbreaking a new science uh, building. It's actually a STEAM complex, so STEM plus arts. It's called the Schenecker Center. It will be located on Summit Avenue. That will be opening in uh, 2024. So it'll house some arts programs and some uh, science and engineering programs. So that will be exciting. As far as the admissions process, we accept applications for every fall and spring semester on a rolling timeline. Uh, you, students can use the St. Thomas application. If they're applying for fall, they can also use Common App. Uh, we'll need you know, high school transcript, college transcript, uh, and then the Dean of Students form, which trips a lot of students up, uh, asks about their discipline issues. Yep, seen some head nods. Um, and uh, pretty much as soon as they apply, you know, we get all those components, we can make a decision. 
uh, on that application. Uh, we don't have like deadlines, but I will say if anyone's applying for this fall semester, May 3rd is when course registration opens for the fall semester. So if they're applied, admitted and confirmed prior to that, uh, then they can register for classes right away. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, uh, and have a good rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. I, I just want to uh, applaud that we have one rep in D1 Sports, yay, St. Thomas. And then I'm also super excited that McAllister is interested in working with the community colleges more closely, and we'll be really excited to see that work develop. Um, I just wanted, since we don't have any questions in the Q&A right now, I just want to do a quick poll visually for everybody that's attending. Um, so a couple of us mentioned uh, the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship. Could you just raise your hand if your institution has a Phi Theta Kappa uh, scholarship? Okay. And then um, I do want to just ask how many of the schools are participating in the pathway project that we're doing statewide? Okay. So just so you know, um, when these colleges have completed the psychology pathway, we will be connecting you directly with these counselors and let you know which schools built a pathway to your community college. We just want to get that communication going right away between schools and partner you uh, with those schools that have those pathways developed. Um, so we're very excited about that project. Um, the information you received in the transfer guide is updated every year. We'll be sending a new one out um, in the fall uh, to everyone once that's developed with updated information. But you can always use that guide to reach out directly to any of our institutions just to find out who to connect to. We as institutions want to connect with your students sooner than later. There are no questions that we worry about. We want to have those questions early in the process and walk alongside your students that are interested in possibly coming to our schools. Uh, we are a low pressure group. We are not going to pressure a student to come to us. We want the student to find the right fit because wherever they transfer to, we want them to stay and finish. That is our goal. The other thing I will just say, we are super excited about the Minnesota Transfer Curriculum and the AA being accepted across 12 of our institutions. Um, that should help ensure your students that for most majors when they transfer to us, they will finish in two years. That is a big thing. That is where they start to save money and it's financially responsible for them to go to the community college and then finish with us in two years. Um, any questions in um, from any counselors 